how do we really know which way prices are heading in the market? And with all the different price measures out there, how do we know which ones we can really trust? I'll put price measures through their paces to find out in this episode of The Lead. So the first thing we need to think about when it comes to different price metrics is we need to know what we're even trying to measure in the first place. This might seem pretty obvious, but the choice of what we're even trying to measure is one of the most important factors that determines whether a price metric is good or something we should raise a suspicious eyebrow about. And the reason for that is when we try to measure the price of something that's way too specific over time, for example, a 500 square foot apartment with green shag carpeting and a south facing balcony, we get way too small of a sample size to get a meaningful read on the price trend. There just aren't that many properties selling with that kind of description. On the other hand, if we're far too general and we just lump everything together, regardless of whether they're residential, commercial, or what have you, we'll get a larger sample size, but it'll be hard to say anything useful about the price trend because we've got one big hodgepodge of properties and the price measure is hugely affected by the ever-shifting composition of the sample. And it's partly for this reason that alternative metrics like the MLS HPI were invented. Modeled metrics like the MLS HPI try to keep the question of what we're even trying to measure as consistent as possible. And the way that they do that is by modeling the value of a theoretical home type that is well represented in the data, but whose characteristics are unchanging over time. By doing this, we avoid the problem of the shifting sales composition skewing our price metric, but we lose some fidelity because the changes in the sales composition can sometimes contain valuable information about shifts happening under the surface of the market. In contrast to model metrics, raw metrics such as the average and median price are also frequently used to track price trends over time. A big advantage to using raw metrics like these is that they're extremely simple to calculate, but their simplicity doesn't come without any cost. To start, these kinds of metrics are heavily influenced by the sample of data they're calculated from, and the presence of outlier data points can sometimes skew the average price up or down in a really big way. And while it's true that the median price is generally less affected by outliers, it's critically dependent on having a sufficiently large sample size to derive a meaningful statistic. So if you've only got a handful of sales to work with, or if your sales have prices that are just all over the map, the median and even the average price might start jumping around on you like a bucking bronco, which makes tracking the actual trend in prices extremely difficult. And falling somewhere in between the MLS HPI and metrics like the average and the median are price metrics like repeat sales indexes. These kinds of metrics try to mitigate compositional issues by tracking the price change of the same properties over time. And while repeat sales indexes might have an intuitive appeal, these kind of metrics aren't without flaws either. For example, even if we're tracking sales of the same property over time, it's possible the property may have been significantly renovated since the last sale. And so the price change in the metric may be more representative of the improvements to the property as opposed to the effects of the broader market forces, which are usually what we're interested in tracking. At this point, it's probably worth visualizing the differences between these price metrics. So here's a plot of what these price metrics look like using composite prices with their values indexed to 2005 so that we can compare them a little bit more easily. Looking at the plot, you might notice that all of these price metrics tell a pretty similar story, but there's also some pretty clear differences. To start, we can see that each metric reports different growth rates at every point in time. And the reason behind that has everything to do with the way that these metrics are constructed. Put simply, the math behind each metric is different, so we shouldn't expect each metric to give precisely the same answer. Another quirk that gets brought up pretty frequently is that some metrics, such as the MLS HPI, are believed to lag the market relative to other metrics such as the raw average price. So let's pull up some data and see if there's any truth to that statement. Here, we're looking at year-over-year -year price changes in each of the price metrics we just saw earlier. And if I draw some lines on this chart marking important turning points in the market, we can see that there does seem to be some evidence that there's a lead-lag relationship between some of these metrics. But it's important to note that this lead-lag relationship isn't always consistent. In some cases, modeled metrics like the MLS HPI lag the raw metrics like the average price, but in other cases, they line up almost perfectly. Now, there's a saying that goes something like, 
timing is everything. But in the case of housing price metrics, the concept of timing is actually a little vague. The same house doesn't change hands every microsecond like stocks do in the stock market. So we can't really ever know the exact timing of a change in price direction in the market overall. It's probably better to think of it as a process or a evolution rather than some instantaneous inflection point at some precise moment in time. And this brings up another interesting aspect of price metrics. Even if every price metric agreed on timing, which they don't, they also probably won't agree on the magnitude of price changes. Here's a plot comparing the month over month price changes in each of these metrics. By looking at the data this way, we can see how volatile price changes are across each metric. Looking at the raw metrics like the average and median price, we can see that these metrics tend to jump up and down a lot more than the modeled metrics such as the MLS HPI and the repeat sales index. And what all this jumping around really amounts to is a lot of noise, and that makes tracking the trend in prices a lot harder. By contrast, the model metrics have a much smoother evolution, which is probably more realistic since it's kind of unlikely that home prices are swinging up and down wildly by 10 to 20% every month. But let's get back to that original question of whether any one metric is better than all of the rest. As we've just seen, every metric has some pros and cons, and it can be kind of difficult to compare these trade-offs in some kind of objective way. But one thing we can say is that a good metric is one that has a very high signal to noise ratio. In other words, a good metric will allow us to easily see through noisy volatility and will give us a sense of how prices are most likely evolving over time. So, if we can agree that smoothness of price changes is a good representation of the signal present in the metric, and if we can agree that volatility is a good representation of noise in a metric, then we can actually quantify a signal to noise ratio for each metric to see how they compare. So here's a plot doing just that for each metric we've looked at so far. Now I won't bore people with the nerdy details of how these metrics are constructed, but we can see a pretty clear winner here when we compare these metrics across this one dimension. But it's important to note that this is just one way of comparing these metrics and it doesn't fully capture all of the trade-offs we've discussed so far. And every single one of those trade-offs may be more or less important depending on the task at hand. So for most casual observers, who are only peripherally interested in what home prices are doing at any given point in time, modeled metrics such as the MLS HPI offer a nice and clear signal of the trends prevalent in the market, even if they may appear laggy relative to other metrics at certain times due to the way they're calculated. But if you're a real estate professional, it's probably worth keeping tabs on at least one modeled metric and one raw metric to make sure you're getting a complete picture of changes happening in the market. But if there's one big takeaway from all of this, I think it's important to stress that no price metric is perfect. And the trick to successfully using any of these price metrics really just comes down to having a better understanding of their various quirks. And as any economist worth their salt will tell you, there's only one true price in the market. That's the price somebody's willing to pay you. So there you have it. The good, the bad, the ugly of price metrics, all in under nine minutes. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned for future episodes of The Lead.